Welcome to another edition of Let's Talk Jonesboro, and today we have Bill Reznicek. He's the city's chief financial officer. Welcome to the show, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Tell us a little bit about uh, the, the budget we're going to announce for 2018. Well, the budget is a fairly comprehensive uh, budget this year. We've got expenditures of about $61 million, and that encompasses both operating and maintenance items as well as a capital budget, which is um, a fairly aggressive budget. It's uh, $13 million of the total $61 million, but it does cover a number of one-time programs uh, and expenditures that we think are necessary for the continued growth uh, of the city and provides quality of life, safety issues, improvements in our infrastructure and things that we just feel are necessary for uh, the way that Jonesboro is growing right now. And that is a, a larger budget than we have in a typical year, correct? It is a larger budget, particularly on the capital item side. Uh, last year's budget uh, initially was about $5 million, but that was reduced because we carried over the shooting range purchase into 2018 because it did not close as we had anticipated. So it's uh, total dollar spending wise, it is a little higher than what we've seen in prior years. And we've also got uh, a STIP and you, you, know, you probably hear the mayor and, and city council members speak about the STIP. It's, it's uh, initials for State Transportation Improvement Program and our part of that uh, is, is minimal compared to what we're getting for it. Is that not right? That's right. We leverage our money significantly with the STIP uh, and that gives us the ability to do projects like the Highway 18 overpass uh, that's going to cross uh, the railroad tracks at Nettleton, which is really a critical project that uh, is long overdue for the city. Yes, it is overdue, anyone who drives that area. I think um, even though that is the most uh, jarring experience if you're stuck at the train tracks there. Uh, what more people will be impacted by uh, added right turn lanes on Red Wolf Dr Stadium Drive, uh, which is also a highway. And that's part of this project for this year, correct? Correct. We do have uh, expenditures in the budget for three uh, right hand turn lanes on Stadium Drive, and uh, we also have one for Stallings. Um, drive so it will alleviate some of the bottlenecks in those areas as well. Good because uh, with all the, the way our city is growing we need to relieve some of the traffic a little bit. We're still not you know it's not like it's a, we're a big city but you can have trouble making turns and and feel a little bit uh, you know, anxious out there getting out on our roads sometimes. Sure. Um, Tell me what all our sources of income are. What, when you look at, when you create a budget, what number of sources do you get money? Sure, there's, you know, probably all total somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 to 30 total sources. Um, the primary sources are, of course, sales tax revenue. Uh, we get money from state turn back, uh, which is basically uh, a portion of state revenue that they allocate back to municipalities. <clears throat> and then we also get franchise fees from people that provide services like cable, internet, uh, phone, um, and of course data, transmission. And those three categories alone account for about 65% of our total revenues. Now after that it drops off uh, fairly significantly, but we also get revenues from our privilege license that we sell um, to the businesses to um, conduct business in Jonesboro. We also have a variety of uh, fees that we collect for various things, building permits, um, uh, we have um, fines that we collect from things like uh, traffic tickets, court fines, fees. So there's a lot of, of items that are smaller categories, but when we look at the budget, the, the items that we're really looking at are those key major contributors, the uh, tax revenues, the state turn back, the franchise fees, and those are accounting again for about 65% of our total revenue. So those are critical items for the operation of the city. Well, tell me about, uh, you know, people are always wanting to make sure their tax dollars go to good use, and I think that's an important thing to be worried about, uh, mm -hmm. or at least to want to want to know 
that you, you have guaranteed. Right. So tell us uh, what, what types of things you do, the mayor recommends, whatever, to, to stretch our dollars. Sure. Um, and one thing I will say is that um, we talk about being good stewards of our taxpayers' dollar on a regular basis. And the mayor has that philosophy. I share that philosophy. And the people in my department uh, have that mindset as well. So the, the couple things that we do, one is we're uh, very strict in adhering to our budget. Uh, we don't deviate from the budget. If we do, we bring that before the Finance Committee and the Council. Uh, to get their approval on that. We also track our expenditures closely to those budget categories and make sure uh, that we're looking at every expenditure relative to uh, the money that's in the budget for that, um, that we're spending what we said we were going to spend. And then uh, the mayor is very good about reviewing all of our expenditures um, and questioning things to make sure that we're doing the right thing in the right way. Uh, I do that as well. Um, so there's several layers of scrutiny that our spending goes through before we actually mail a check out or, or release funds. So um, I think we've got a pretty good uh, grip on the way we're spending the, the money for the city. And again, the key to it, the underlying philosophy, is that we're trying to be good stewards of the taxpayer's dollar. Well, in, in doing that, it, it can be difficult because we have around 20 department heads and directors underneath them with the, of, of various departments uh, all coming to you. And, and at the end of the year, you guys sit down and determine the budget for each department. Is, Correct. Is it... Uh, Everybody wants something, you know, if, if I'm a fire chief, I want another person on a truck or a new fire station. If I'm a police chief, I want as many officers as I can have. If I'm an engineer, I want all the equipment and the, and the, the staff that I can get to make sure that, that, mm -hmm. that people come to the, the city get what they want. How do you, how do you negotiate that? You know, what's, what's the most difficult part of strategizing? Well. Uh, you know, typically what happens in a budget process is people come in, they have the things that are um, necessities for running their department, things that are necessities for making sure the city functions as it should, and then there's always the uh, discretionary items, the items that they would like to have. Maybe they're not showstoppers, they might be able to function without them. So we do go through a uh, process of looking at what we believe are discretionary spending items. Things that, yeah, it would be nice to have them. Uh, they may, you know, add some value to what we're doing overall uh, for the city and for the taxpayers. And certainly there's some consideration for those items. And if they make sense, uh, we feel like we can afford them, then we'll put some of that money in the budget. Because it's in the budget, doesn't necessarily mean we're going to spend it. Uh, it just means it's appropriated and we have the ability to spend it if we decide at some point that the project is viable or that the expenditure is viable. Um, so the process that we go through is we look at the initial submission from the departments and then we start to um, you know, question some of their, their spending, particularly on the discretionary side. So it's um, a fairly lengthy process that we go through and we try to whittle the budget down to you know, something that's manageable, something that makes sense. Um, and again, we look at those items that we think are necessary for the growth of the city, items that are going to contribute to the quality of life, uh, the safety uh, of our citizens, and the ongoing infrastructure uh, improvements and, and uh, growth of the city. So it's a, it's a pretty uh, lengthy process. It's a um, process that uh, the city's done for a number of years. It does it very well. I came in about midpoint in this year's budget process. I was fairly impressed with how the process works, fairly impressed with the knowledge of the people, uh, both in my department and the department heads in terms of how to approach doing a budget, what the negotiation process is like, and ultimately how we wind up with the, um, the end result, um, which again, I think this year, we have a very solid budget. Um, I don't see anything in the budget that I would consider overreaching in terms of the spending or the request by the department heads. We recently purchased land for a shooting complex. Um, tell us a little bit about that and, and uh, what we're going to get for it. 
The sheeting complex has been in the uh, works on the drawing board for a while. Uh, it's being funded uh, with a grant from the, the uh, Fish and Game Department and it is going to give us the ability to uh, do a couple things. One, enhance our training facility for our police officers and also give us a sports complex where enthusiasts can come and uh, participate in, in their sport um, both from a recreational standpoint and from a uh, competitive and professional standpoint. So um, it's a purchase of land that um, you know, we've had in the budget, uh, as I mentioned originally was in the 2017 budget. We didn't get to actually close on the property until uh, here a couple days ago, so we rolled it into the 2018 budget. But um, it's going to provide uh, another source of, of draw for our community in terms of the ability to bring in uh, tournaments and enthusiasts from really around the country. And what that does is, one, it gives Jonesboro uh, another opportunity to be a destination point, and it also brings in those tax dollars. It brings in additional money from tourism, additional money to the uh, A&P funds. Uh, so it's really a win-win for the city uh, and a win-win for uh, sports enthusiasts and certainly for our police department. It's a substantial upgrade in the facilities that they have for training their officers. Yeah, and uh, this this is definitely something we see as a as a eventually a money maker, but it's going to take some money to make it happen. And uh, is that going to come out of our budget, or how is where is that money coming from? Some of it will come out of our budget. Some of it will come out of the grant. Um, but we envision over the long term that uh, similar to our parks department, the um, uh, sponsorship fees, the fees for uh, the tournaments, probably some opportunities for naming rights on some of the facility should generate uh, essentially the revenue for not only a payback of the city's investment in it, but in time uh, we should begin to see some actual return on the investment. Very good. And the same is true for land we've purchased for an aquatic center out at uh, Joe Mack Campbell Park. Um, Correct. We, we hope to see that be a, a, a money maker too, right? Absolutely, yeah. We have the um, Lacey Avenue property out adjacent to Joe Mack Campbell Park. The plans are to put in an aquatic center, as you mentioned. Uh, we're actually doing the, um, or have engaged the design firm to do the design of that facility. I know the mayor and uh, some other folks went and toured other aquatic facilities um, throughout the region this past year and came back uh, with some very favorable impressions of what those folks are doing and what the opportunity was for that. And this facility would give us, um, again, a uh, point of destination for people. It would also give us the ability to host tournaments, uh, swim meets, and uh, those type of events can bring in people from all across the country. Uh, generate uh, hotel occupancy, people go out and eat, they go out and shop in our city. So it's a great source of uh, tourism and revenue again for our city and we think over time it's another case where it's a facility that although there's some initial investment involved that we eventually can recoup the investment and actually have some return uh, on that facility itself. And I guess the last thing I'd like to ask you Bill is how you feel like we're positioned for the future. We've We've, uh, we've increased raises to, for our police and fire department that were needed. We've uh, increased, we've even given raises to a lot of uh, other departments that, to make them more in line with other cities of our size. Uh, and uh, some critics have said that we've spent uh, too much on raises. My question is, uh, how are we positioned for the future right now? I think the city's in an excellent position. I think, um, you know, when I look at things that have been done over the past couple years, um, I would have to agree with the mayor's vision of where the city needs to, to head in the future. Uh, the things he's done with the employees in terms of the compensation programs, I think were uh, absolutely necessary. I think they were um, done uh, in such a manner that they provided a fair and equitable uh, compensation program. I think the mayor's vision on that was was right on. I think uh, again his vision for where the city 
is going to go in the future is an excellent one. You know, people that work around him uh, know how passionate he is about Jonesboro, how passionate he is about the people that work for the city, uh, about the citizenry of Jonesboro. Um, and so I think we're well positioned. I think we've got great leadership. I know we have a, a great um, team uh, and our, our management team here. I've been very impressed with the people that uh, work in the city, the department heads. Um, you know, the, the objectives for the city government are to provide the necessary infrastructure for Jonesboro so that it can be a place where people perceive a quality of life where they want to bring a family, uh, uh, plant some roots, uh, have a future, have good jobs, have economic growth for them and their families. And I, I see all those things coming to fruition. And you know, the city has uh, the funds uh, available to continue to grow. Uh, we're still uh, always looking for opportunities to uh, improve our revenues. Um, certainly, uh, we've always got to be um, cognizant of the fact that it takes money to do the things that we want to do. But I certainly think that right now, Jonesboro, as it grows, is in an excellent position co to continue to be a premier city in the state of Arkansas. Very nice. So there you have it. Uh, thank you, Bill, for joining us today on Let's Talk. Glad to be here. And we'll see you next time.